the Claudine, I've seen God move in mighty ways. I've seen him answering prayers. Amen. I've seen him doing some things that I never would have thought that would be done, Brother Gary, but God's doing it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Gary, amen, had a hip surgery about, what, three months ago? Amen. Uh, August the 12th. Amen. And uh, uh, we've been praying that God uh, uh, get him back to where he could get coming back to church. Amen. And uh, this morning he came to church and he was feeling a whole lot better and he came back again tonight. Amen. Why? Because God is still an answer and prayer God. Amen. A lot of times people say, well, uh, you ain't going to get no better. You ain't going to get no better if you don't believe you're going to get better. Amen. You ain't going to get healed if you don't believe you're going to be healed. Amen. Jesus said you had to believe when you asked. Amen. And I thank the Lord tonight. Amen. We got a lot to pray about. Amen. I should remember our newlyweds. Amen. They're they're probably about a thirty or forty five minutes away from Smokey. Amen. They uh Cassie and Josh just got there today overslept and missed him outside her house on fire. Amen. But uh they uh they made it safely. Amen. You know, it could have been a coincidence. What are you talking about, Brother Miller? Well, God might have seen that it was going to be an accident on the way. Right. And he slowed them down. Amen. He can't do that. There's a reason for all things. Amen. God has a reason for all things. They could have been a... a we were going one time to... Uh, no, up here. Del, Del Holla. Amen. And uh, I accidentally... <laughs> amen. Back my friend's RV into a, a gas pump. Uh, one of those... Metal U things they have out there. I caught the back side of that U haul. I don't know how it done it, but it did it. Or, I mean, an RV. And I don't know how it did it, but it did it. And we sat there and I was trying to work on it, trying to get it done. And I was I was feeling so sick in my stomach because I had done it. And he's, oh, don't worry about it. It's all right. Don't worry about it. It's okay. I was like, but it don't look okay. It's okay. And then uh, his daughter gets out, and we didn't want, I didn't want people to know, well, who done it and all that. And she gets out and cars my name in the gas pump. Said, she carved my name on there and said, Miller was here. And I was like, and then all of a sudden, here come this guy. We're trying to do something. He brought, he, he said, here, I can help y'all. He said, I got some ratchet straps. And he said, just right up the road up there, they had a bad accident. So see, we could have been in that accident. Does God God watch out for you? Yes, he does. Amen. Uh, so remember them tonight that God will keep his hand on them. They'll have a safe trip back also. Amen. They'll have a good time. Amen. Uh, also remember Brother Morris tonight. Amen. Brother Morris, if you didn't you seen him yesterday, he was trying to do his best yesterday. But brother, he was so tired. He was so wore out. He can't do like he used to do. He can't get out holy shard like he loves to do. He can't get out and trim the trees like he loves to do. Um, but he's seventy over seventy six years old now. And his body is just it's it's wore down. He is Amen. It's just wore down. He is seventy six. Amen. His body is just wore down. I mean, it's just, he, he is so tired. Um, he, he's worked, as long as I've known him, he's worked a full time job. He's been, he, that's been many years. he been, but uh, I told him that I loved him. I appreciated him last night, yesterday. And, uh, amen. I, I really miss him when we're not here. Amen. I miss him. Uh, pray for Sister Darlene because uh, she's got all them grandbabies. She got a handful. <laughs> so remember her in prayer. That God be with them, help them this week. Amen. Uh, also remember uh, the Webb family, uh, Brother Danny Webb's wife. Amen. Her family. Remember them. And me and Brother Wayne today was at the funeral home up here at uh, Crows. Amen. Was taking the cheers and stuff back. And uh, I normally don't do stuff like that on Sunday. But we had to get the ox out of the ditch today. Amen. But I went into the funeral home and the guy said that we got three funerals today. He said, y'all just, if y'all can, y'all just go in the garage there and unload them. And uh, remember those families. 
Just remember those families. Amen. The, the, those families. Amen. We don't know who they are, but God knows those families. And they need prayer tonight. Amen. They need they need the encouragement. They need they need somebody to lift them up in prayer. Amen. I would like somebody to lift me up in prayer sometimes. I, but it makes me feel good because sometimes I can feel when somebody's praying for me. Amen. If you if you know that somebody's praying for you, Amen. You don't never know in the midnight hour who's laying down on their knees or who's calling out to God for you. Amen. But then you can just feel that calmness come over you. Amen. So uh, remember those families tonight. Also remember those that was involved in that wreck yesterday. Uh, I don't know the guy's name. Amen. But he's on a vent. Amen. In the hospital, he's not here. But uh, remember him, Amen. Uh, he's he he had low sugar and he couldn't hit the brakes and all he was still a brake. He just kept pushing the gas pedal and uh, hit a head on, hit a car, a parked car head on. Amen. Now he's on life support. Amen. So remember that family in prayer. Also remember my daughter, uh, my oldest daughter Carrie and Jeff. Amen. Remember them in prayer. Remember him. He's uh, he's coming a long ways. He has come a long ways. Uh, he wants to walk by himself. He don't want nobody to help him walk now. He wants to do it himself. He wants to use that walker thing to walk himself. And uh, he don't want me pulling at him no more. Don't be trying to pull him up or nothing anymore. He wants to get up himself. Uh, but remember him that he'll get his speech all the way back. That he'll start, like Sister Nora said, start putting his sentence together. He can some. He's doing better. Uh, but just remember him in prayer. I know it's hard with my daughter again. She's trying to pull the load on all of it. Amen. And it's really got hard on her. It's really it really bothers her because she saw a video here a while back where he was just over it with uh, Misty's and Ann's and he was having a birthday party and he was him and Daniel was really having fun together. And, uh, you know, like, you look back at that and how he was and how he is now, it's just, it's, it's different. And it's heartbreaking. It really is. But remember them in prayer tonight. Remember Brother Bob Sandlin in Ohio. Amen. Him and his church. Remember his sister-in-law. She, the doctors gave her that old ugly C-word thing on her. Amen. Uh, remember her. He lost his brother because of it, and a sister-in-law's got it. They say they've got cancer, amen, we don't claim that. But we need to pray for them, pray for their church, pray for uh, Faith Revival Church in North Carolina, amen, that God continue blessing them. Uh, they are really growing in that little building that they've got a bigger building now, but it's done about packed. Amen, God should bring them off the streets. Amen. They're, they're, they'll get out on the weekends, every weekend just about, and they're giving food away. I mean, I'm talking food. I'm talking about fried chicken, mashed potatoes, corn, uh, macaroni and cheese. They're giving meals away. Amen. And God's blessing them. The people's bringing it to them to help them give it to these people. And these people are coming into the house of God. Amen. They're feeding them, then they're feeding them the Word, and they're getting saved. They were having a baptizing here just a few days ago. Man, I mean, these people were just... And they were... Really serious. Amen. When you see them baptized, they come up out of that water shop. Amen. That's what you want to see. Amen. But uh, remember that church. Amen. Up there uh, in, uh, in uh, North Carolina. Amen. And also remember Sister Faircloth and her two daughters. Amen. She wants to see her two daughters saved. Amen. So if you want somebody to pray for you, you just get a hold of Sister, Sister Faircloth and she'll pray. She's a praying woman. Amen. So. Uh, remember that. Somebody else got a prayer request. Amen. Somebody else. Yes. Yes. Amen. Remember that. Amen. I, I said, like I said this morning, amen. You're a Christian. Get out and vote. Amen. If you're a Christian, get out and vote. Do your Christian duty. Amen. Well, it ain't my Christian duty. Yes, it is. Amen. It's, it's your privilege to get out and stop the corruption. Amen. Well, we got the right. Amen. Somebody else.
Yes, amen. Somebody else. Yes, yes. Amen. Somebody else. Amen. Remember our California church, out in California, our folks has been watching us since day one, since we started out here. Amen. They've been watching us faithful seven years. Amen. Uh, remember Brother Darrell, Sister Francis, and Little Artie. Amen. I, I, they come to business. They drove in one last year come to business. Amen. I hope they get to make it in this again. Amen. They just en enjoyed seeing them. But uh, pray for them. Pray for Sister uh, Carly Pope and her family. Amen. Sister Marjorie Burkett and her family. Sister Judy McCarty and her family. Amen. Sister Lynn and her family. And Sister Naomi and her family. Amen. That's all one family. Amen. That watches us. Then they got other ones that's watched us. Amen. And uh, pray for our live streams tonight. Big old live Facebook live tonight. Amen. Listen, church. God is on the move. Yeah. Amen. We're, Sister Claudine, we're seeing so many people. Amen. It's changing. And, and the lives we've seen atheists give their heart and lives to the Lord. Amen. Through our live streams. Amen. And it's God. It's not us. Amen. We didn't. We, you know, a lot of times you got to break it down and just let them know who created us. Amen. And uh, uh, they they gave their heart and life to the Lord. Uh, Brother Bob, amen. We had a guy that watched on our, our uh, TikTok channel. Amen. And he uh, gave his heart and life to the Lord. We've had uh, uh, homosexuals to turn and change their life. Amen. Why? It's because of God. It's not us. We didn't do it. We didn't do it. God did it. Amen. He's the only one that can save somebody. I can't save you. I can preach you the word of God. It's up to you. I was I was at the house praying the other day, and a food trough come in front of me. A food trough. I thought, what's a food trough coming in front of me for, Brother Rick? And I was sitting there like, God, are you want me to eat or what? And he said, you can put the feed in it, but it's up to them if they want to come and eat out of that feed. See, I watched my farmers. And they got all kinds of different animals and they all got different kinds of food that they have to eat. They got a pig, or pig, their pig has to have a special food, a diet, and it has to be fished a certain way. And God was showing me the other day that food trough. And you know what I saw in that food trough? I saw scriptures. And he said it's up to them if they want to come and eat it. He said, you feed them. You can't make them come to the trough. But it's there for them if they want it. And I, I watch them farmers and those goats, when they hear that bucket shaking, if they want that food, they're going to break their neck to get up there to that trough to get that food. If they don't want it, you won't, they won't come to it. That same way with Christians. God will show me that, that same way they are. You can't make them eat. It's up to them to eat. Amen. Somebody else got a prayer request. <laughs> yes, amen. Also remember her son David. He goes next month to have weight loss surgery. Amen. Remember that. Uh, also, Brother Morse has test results coming back. Supposed to come back next week. Brother David. His numbers and stuff. They change it again. Amen. So uh, continue to remember that. Amen. Uh, remember all the churches around this community. Amen. That God will just <clears throat> bless them. Pour a spirit out upon them. Brother Tony Dean and Sister uh, Tina. Amen. In uh, Florida. Amen. The prayers. Remember them in prayer. So remember them in prayer. Amen. Brother Tony's mother. Uh, Sister uh, Wanda Osborne. Amen. Remember her. Uh, also, I had Brother Lamb on my mind today. Amen. Brother Lamb, the, the color guy that came yes. here, Bishop Lamb. Amen. He, he was on his way to Birchport, and the Lord told him to turn around and come back to this church. Amen. And uh, he didn't know when things was going on. This was back last year, before last. He didn't know stuff was going on, Sister Claudine. But he came back and he got, uh, got a, a talk to us and uh, prayed for us and I mean he just brought it all out he didn't know nothing about nothing God turned him around and came back amen but remember him in prayer 
Amen. He's a man. He goes overseas and stuff, and he goes over these mission fields. Amen. And it, right now, it's just it's it's very dangerous. And I believe in doing mission work. I believe in doing going to the mission fields. But right now, it's dangerous. Amen. Anywhere, it's, it's dangerous in the United States of America. Amen. I, uh, it, I don't like my daughters to go to Walmart by themselves, and Mama don't like them out door dashing. Her oldest now door dashing by herself because it scares her. Amen. Because you don't know what's working in the dark. Amen. But uh, but remember on that. Remember, like he said, remember our nation, remember our land and country. Amen. Remember this election that's coming up. Uh, pray for Israel. Amen. They're, they're right now they're fighting. Amen. A war. A big war right now. It's, it's, a, it's a mess. I'm telling you. But God is in control. Right. Amen. Because I was praying for him. And, and it's like, remember when Elijah told him to go out and look? And he went out to look. And he did. He, he, he come back in. He said, man, there's all kinds of them out there. They got us surrounded. He said, go out and look again. He goes back out and looks. And when he sees, he sees chariots of fire all around. Amen. Why? God still got his army all camped around Israel. Amen. He's going to take care of his own. Amen. His people. Even though the Jews rejected him, he's still going to keep his hands on his people. Amen. You ain't wait to, listen, the Jews wanted him crucified. Amen. They thought they were above of not being, you know, we, we don't have to do, we don't, we don't have to live by this, we don't have, but with the Gentiles, they're the ones that's going to die and go to hell, we're, we got a free ticket to heaven, but see, that ain't what Jesus told them, amen, Jesus didn't tell them that, he said, you scribes, you Pharisees, you hypocrites, you vipers, and you snakes, uh -huh. and people are like, what am I going to do, he said, Listen, he said, go to the Gentile nation. They'll accept you. Amen. They will accept the word of God. Amen. Ain't you glad you're the Gentile nation tonight? Amen. That we've been grafted in, been adopted. Amen. Now, if somebody else, before we pray. Yes, Sister Bessie in Michigan. Amen. Remember her family. Amen. Somebody else. Remember Brother Wayne's brother? I haven't heard how he's doing. Is he doing better, Wayne? About the same. About the same. Amen. Also remember Brother Jackie Stamps tonight, uh, Sister Tammy Brown, and Brother Timmy. Sister Tammy really does need our prayer church. That COPD is really, she can't even stand up. When she stands up, she has to have oxygen because she just can't breathe. And uh, she's got congestive heart failure, so that don't help. And then she's got some other issues that's wrong with her, amen, that God... God knows about and God can take care of. Amen. So they ask for prayer. So remember them. They're, they're from Scotsville. Amen. They go to the Lord and church over there. Amen. So and also remember Brother Chris Calvert. Amen. He needs prayer also. He needs strength. Amen. So lift him up. Amen. In prayer. I just broke a request by the raising of him. Remember this service tonight. Let's get in. Let's have church. Amen. Pray to see you. Pray to you all.
Brother Wayne will bless the offering tonight. Your gracious Father God of heaven tonight, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity to be in my house tonight. Lord, we ask, Father, that you bless this offering, Lord, for the building of your kingdom, Lord. Bless those that have to give tonight, God, and those that not don't have tonight, God, that you bless them more that they'll be able to give later down the road, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Listen, this is Friday night in Plano, Kentucky. That Brother Kevin Hinton, so we're going to be having a chili cook off and an auction. Amen. For the mission field. Amen. And, uh, if you got anything you'd like to donate, amen. They didn't ask us to do this, but we just felt like we needed to do this to help them out. Amen. If you got something that you want to get rid of, you, you've only used it two or three times, you don't want to use it anymore, amen. They'll take it and sell it. Amen. Uh, and I know where the money is going to, amen. I know it's going into good hands. It ain't going into the pastor's pocket, amen. But it's going out to reach the, the, the people in the, uh, the mission fields, amen. Uh, Brother Kevin that has been over in Kenya. He's been over in Africa. He's been in England. He's been in hey. uh, Hades and a lot of places, amen. And uh, they really do help the mission, amen. If you want to join in, with their chili cook-off, and you think your chili is the bomb? <laughs> Amen. Uh, I think you have to be there by 5.30 with your chili. Amen. But it starts at 6 o'clock. Amen. And uh, we would, uh, would like, if you want to uh, go down there, it's at Plano, Kentucky. You can't, it ain't hard to find this church. Punch it in on your GPS, and it'll take you right to it. Amen. Uh, but it starts at 6 o'clock. Uh, but if you've got something you want to give, amen, bring it to the church Thursday night, amen, and we'll make sure that they get it Friday, amen. Uh, if you want to go and take it yourself, amen, but you'll be blessed, I guarantee you, God will bless you back for it. Uh, we done got a few items already donated, and uh, so I want to get that out there. And don't forget, December the 8th is It'll be here before we know it. I mean, it'll be, uh, our church uh, will be having their uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving dinner together. Amen. We then got the place reserved and everything for it. Amen. We, we love for everybody to come be with us. Amen. We, we, we believe in help feeding people. Amen. I mean, uh, we have so much food. Sometimes we, we have so much food. We, we have some no, sister Lord. Amen. We have so much food left over. Amen. We're giving it here, giving it there, giving it to people. Amen. So uh, last night we had all kinds of cake left over because they didn't want to eat it. <laughs> Amen. So we got rid of it. Praise the Lord. But uh, but that's just the way we are. Amen. We love to feed people, try to help people that we can. Amen. God lays them on our heart. We do it. We pray about it. Amen. God, God lays it on our heart. Amen. But I want to get that out there. Amen. All right, boys. Uh, Brother Michael come sing for us tonight. Uh, sing that one bass band for us. Or keep singing that one bass and that we got to speak. Can you sing we got to speak? Amen. We're going to let his wife have a break tonight. Broken hearted, if we 
building up spoke to me and we got a standard okay and but you if you want to say you sit there and say but God spoke to me and told me not to let nobody up here with shorts on or no pants on that's God told me
that we we love everybody. We don't hate nobody. I don't hate nobody. I want people to. I don't want you to feel that way tonight. I don't say I don't. Don't want you to feel that way at all. But uh, I just have to uphold the standard that God's put me in place of. And I've had other people to come in here and say, I had a woman that come here and her daughters, and she knows how we believe. She come for a while. She knows how we believe, but she want to bring her daughters and them yoga pants. She want them to get up here and sing with the teenagers, and I would, you know, they can stand out here. They're not getting up here. Amen. Really, I don't. Them yoga pants ain't good to wear in church anyway. I was thinking, there's too many men in the church. Come on, too many men wants to look. Don't say you don't look because they can't. They will. Amen. Then them women come in with them. I mean, men come in with them skinny jeans on. Guess what? The women are doing. Come on, I'm just telling the truth. Amen. I've been around. I've been to different churches. I've seen it. Amen. I've been to these gospel concerts and they come out with them skinny jeans on. I'm like, what are they want? What are they trying to do? Impress somebody? Amen. We're supposed to impress God. Amen. And I want you to know, honestly, I do. I don't want you to have no hard feelings on this. I want you to come back and be with us. Uh, this is just, I've got to keep this here the way God told me to do it. Amen. And I don't hold nothing against nobody. I promise you, I promise you, I don't. Even that Sister Tracy, and I don't do that Sister Tracy. Amen, I don't. Uh, I've got people in here, amen, that wears makeup. I don't think I, that, that's between them and God. I can't make them quit wearing makeup. It's between them and God, amen. All I do is preach the Word of God to people. I, like I said, that food trough, I can't make them eat. I can preach it to them. Amen. I hope this ain't hurt nobody's feelings tonight because I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. But I, I, like I said, I've got to guard this. This is what God put me in charge of. And if I don't, Sister Claudine, I'd rather get a whooping from a man than get a whooping from God. Right. If you ever got a whooping from God, it lasts us a long time. And then I'm, I, he's going to tell me, I told you no. I told you no. Amen. And I, I don't want I don't want to go from God and I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings by no means. By no means I don't mean to hurt nobody's feelings. Well he told me yesterday he said, I like that fellow over there. He said he Yeah, well, I my my connection, I connect with people. I don't want I connect with people, I know their feelings. I know what they if they're really we're serving God, I can feel it. I mean I can tell it. And I was watching him yesterday and how he was helping over there. And he was, man, he was making two men and cheese sandwiches and we didn't get that. But, but it was, he, he was helping, you know, come and help and brought tables and, and you know, I, I don't know, that really blessed me that he come and done that and help. Amen. Because he knows me still. And, uh, but,
got staff light on its way. Uh, they've got the roads all closed and everything. Let's all stand and let's pray for these people in this room. Because, listen, it's, it's what, the last three weekends? The last three weekends on Strasburg Road. Blessed Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we come to you right now. God, whoever that is that's in that wreck right now, God, Lord, you know who they are, God, and you see the shape that they're in. And Lord God, I pray, God, that you go right there where they're at right now. God, that you would comfort those there in that wreck. Lord, let them, God, be all right. God, don't let them be hurt real bad, Lord God. I ask God in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, the staff light, Lord, it's coming. God, I don't know what's going on, but God, you do. And, and Lord God, I ask you to reach your hand of mercy down. Lord, and touch those. God, if there's little children in the vehicles or what, God, I ask God that you watch over and protect them. Lord, don't let them be hurt real bad, God. God, I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you go right down to them. God, I ask right now, God, give them the safety, Lord God. Let the workers be able to work it, Lord God, and not get run over or get hurt, God. We ask right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, and I give you a praise, glory, and honor for it. Right now, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, church. That's what we're supposed to do. Yes. We don't yes. know who that could be in one of your family members. Right. Amen. It could be one of my family members. Amen. It could be involved in that wreck. I hope it ain't my daughter. Amen. But I don't know. Amen. But God does. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you,
praying and I was talking to the Lord. I was in there washing dishes. Amen. And I said, Lord, I said, I got to have something to preach. Amen. This morning. But God said, this morning he changed it on me, Sister Lori. But he gave me something last night. And there's a song that that there, that I listen to a lot. And, and the, name, the title of that song is At the Midnight Cry. But God spoke to me this morning at 4.30 in the morning as I was at the sink washing dishes. <laughs> Brother Miller, why wasn't you in the bed? Well, I was wore out. I'll just tell you, I was wore out. And But God don't let me sleep on Thursday, Saturday nights. I'm just going to tell you, church, I, I wrestle with, with sleep on Saturday nights because I have to get something to preach to the church. But God spoke to me. Amen. And he said, when Jesus steps out on the cloud. When Jesus steps out on the cloud. The Bible says in Mark chapter 13. Amen. If you got your Bibles, Mark chapter 13. Amen. In verse number 25. Amen is where I'll start reading. Amen. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 13. In verse 25 it says... And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the power that are in the heavens shall be shaken. Listen at verse number 26. And then shall they see the Son of Man come in a cloud with great power and with great glory. Amen. And then shall he send angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from the uttermost parts of the earth and of the uttermost parts of the heavens. Amen. And as I begin to pray and I begin to talk to the Lord, Sister Claudine, amen, God said when Jesus steps out on the clouds of glory, amen, He's going to step out, church. And it ain't going to be long that He's going to step out on the clouds of glory. And He's going to declare that time shall be no more. Amen. At the midnight cry. Amen. Like I said this morning, those ten versions and foolish and the five foolish and the five wise. Amen. At the midnight call. Amen. The bridegroom came. He's going to come at the midnight hour. He's going to step out on the clouds of glory. And He's going to call time be no more. When Jesus steps out on the cloud, I thought, God, why are you telling me this? But at the midnight cry, we're going home. We're going home. Ready or not, we're going home. You look at all the wrecks in the last three weeks has been on Gospel Road. Brother Danny Webb didn't know that he was going home last Sunday. He didn't know that he was going to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. He didn't know that. Amen. Those ones last night on Shasta Road, they didn't know that they were going to be in a car wreck. Amen. They didn't know they were going to be hit head on. Blood everywhere. Little babies crying. At that call, when he steps out on the clouds to call his children home, Amen. He's going to make a call. Amen. That archangel's going to step out and he's going to sound that trumpet. Amen. The Bible said the dead in Christ are going to rise first and those in which are alive and remain, amen, are going to be called up here. I believe we're going to be those that's going to be called up here after, Brother Chris. I believe we're going to be the ones that he's going to call. Amen. We're going to get to see the dead in Christ rise first. Amen. And we're going to get to go up to be with him. But guess what? He showed me last night. Well, this morning, do you know what cloud represents? The cloud represents being in the presence of God. <coughs> Who are we going to be in the presence of? The Almighty God. Sister Claudine, when that cloud opens up, I remember that song Brother Moore sang. 
the clouds open up and there stands Jesus. Amen. The presence of the Lord. Amen. I've been in preaching for a long time. Amen. And there's a haze. Amen. In the building. You can't see a haze. Amen. That's the cloud of God. Amen. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Amen. He said, I'll go before you. I'll cause a mist. I'll call a cloud. Amen. To come in the mist. Amen. Read in the Bible. Amen. Over there when they were building the temple. Amen. The Bible said the glory of God came into place like a cloud. Amen. It filled the place. In other words, God's presence was in the cloud. And that's why he was speaking to me last night. He said, I'm in the cloud. Have you, he said, have you been looking at the clouds? Have people, you've been seeing pictures on Facebook, different shapes in the cloud? Have you seen the angels walking through the clouds? Have you seen the people that, that walks through the clouds? That's the ancient ones. Amen, that's the ones of old. Amen. Them's the ones that's done going on. God's showing people signs. He said they're asking for signs. Where's the signs at? He said, look in the clouds. Look up to the sky. Amen. There's, there's things happening. Stair steps in the clouds. Sister, boy, there's things happening in the clouds. People don't realize. God is saying, look, I saw one the other day in Arizona. Somebody took a picture of it. It was in Arizona. Somebody took a picture and there were horses. What's the Bible say? Jesus is going to bring back what? He's going to come back on what? White horses. People say there's no animals in heaven. Oh, yes, there is. But we're going to come back on a white horse. Oh, my goodness. But what I look at last night, this morning, while I was washing dishes, Amen. I was thinking about him stepping out on that cloud. What is it going to be like? Amen. The Bible said it's going to roll back like a scroll. Amen. And the lightning's going to pass from the east to the west. Amen. And the sound is going to come out. Amen. I was listening. Amen. The Bible said, Amen. That they, John said, he said, I heard a sound in heaven. It sounded like somebody playing harps. Amen. They were getting their harps. They were playing harps. Amen. And there was a voice like thunder. Amen. That came out of the throne. That was the voice of God. The Bible said his voice is like thunder. Amen. And I began to look through the clouds. Amen. I was riding down the road one day and God began to give me a song. I've not got it all wrote down yet. But he said, my home is not here, but my home is beyond the clouds. When I go through the clouds, I'm in the presence of the Almighty God. Amen. I'm in the presence of the Son of Living God. I'm in the presence of the Holy Angels. I'm in the presence of heaven. Amen. For the glory of God is. The people said, Brother Miller, how do you know that? Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Amen. I could just uh, see them people up there playing them hearts. <laughs> oh, David might have been over there playing with them hearts because that's what he played. Amen. He played a harp. <laughs> uh, come on, church. Some people say, I don't like that music playing while church, while preachers are preaching. Let me tell you something. Sometimes preachers got to have it. Get the evil spirits out of the church. Amen. That's why David, amen, played the heart for the king. Amen. Because to run the evil spirits out. Amen. But when the presence of the Lord, the Bible said that the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Amen. It came in like a cloud. Amen. It came in like a smoke. And God's presence was in the place. I was sitting there today at home after church was over. We got done hauling all that stuff. Amen. I was sitting at home. And I began to listen to God. And I began to look some more scripture things up. Amen. He said they played the harps. He said they were playing on the harps. And a voice that came from the throne like thunder. And the Bible says over there, amen, in the Old Testament, it said God's voice is the sound of thunder. He shoots the lightning out down his arms and out his fingertip. Amen. I believe when Jesus steps out, when God said, son, go get your bride, like I said this morning, when he says, go get your bride, I was thinking about, amen, Madison.
Jesus in the house he was yesterday, how she was getting adorned and how she was getting repaired. Amen. God said, I'm tying this in together. Amen. She was getting herself prepared. Amen. Uh, like I said this morning, if you want to go to heaven, you better get yourself prepared to make that journey. Amen. You bet we're the bride of Christ. Uh, amen. People said, I don't believe in women preachers. Uh, I don't believe in them. Well, let me tell you something. You don't believe in the bride of Christ. Amen. Because the church is a woman. Uh, amen. It's considered as a woman. Uh, amen. And Jesus is the husband. And he's going to come back after his bride. Amen. At the midnight cry. The Jewish custom is before the marriage, the husband goes at midnight and he gets his bride from, the top, from her home. He goes and takes her away at midnight. And they have their marriage ceremony at midnight. Why do they do that? Because of the ten verses that God commanded, said at the midnight. There's something about the midnight cry, church. There's something about him stepping out on the cloud. You say, what do you mean, Brother Miller? I believe it's coming soon. I believe, like I said, church is going to have three and a half years time to get prepared, to get souls saved. Because the Bible said in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit. Amen. He's facing to open up the heavens. And he's facing to take that Holy Ghost. And it's going to come down. And it's going to go from breast to breast. It's going to go from child to child, from daughter to daughter, from son to son, from mother to mother, from father to father. Amen. From husband to wife, from wife to husband. It's going to pour. He said, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Your old men are going to dream dreams. Your young men are going to see visions. And on upon your handmaidens, I will pour out my spirit upon your servants. I'm going to pour out my spirit. He's not leaving nobody out. Amen. But those that are willing to accept it, those that are willing to take it, amen, he's going to give them a space and a time. He said, I'm going to give everybody a chance to be saved. Everybody a chance to be saved. Before that mark of the beast hits this earth. People said all the mark of the beast is no, it's not here yet. Read your Bible, it's not here yet. Listen, they can make all them chips they want to. The Bible didn't say it was a chip. Right. The Bible said it's a mark. I can take an ink pen and I can make a mark with it. He said it's a mark. It's either going to be on their forehead or on their back. Right. The number 666. There's people that goes out and gets tattoos. I seen a girl the other day. She's got it right here. 666 tattooed on her, 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 her ear. That ain't going to stop her. She still wants to stop her. Oh, when they take that mark, they can't go into the stores. Why do you think they have machines? They have machines. I told that man out of Walmart. I said, you know what any machines are there for? I said, you ain't to catch a thief. I see they ain't catching bleach, but they go through that all the time. I stand out there and I don't watch them. They'll just say, oh, go ahead. Yeah. You're all right. They don't know what they had skin and what they had skin. Right. Come on, church. And I said, you know what that's for? But I said, when it comes down to that day, when you can't buy or sell, I said, and they try to come in that store, it's going to stop them. It's going to stop them. Because it reads that mark. It reads the mark. You remember when they put the scanners in the stores? Uh, when you walk through the aisles and you want to scan see what your prices was? Me, when it hits me, Sister Paul, I just do whatever it hits me. I walked up to that scanner that day and I said, like that right there. We're not programmed for that yet. <laughs> Come on, ask your Google machine. That's what it tells you. We're not programmed for that yet. Ask Alexis. Uh, we're not programmed for that yet. Come on, church. Ask your Google. It'll tell you on your phone. Do you believe that the coming of Jesus is coming? Come on. My wife asked Google the other day. She 
consider you stupid? I appreciate you talking about that. People say, well, what are you talking about, Brother Miller? He said when he steps out on the clouds of glory, time will be no more. It'll be over. The Spirit of God, when the church is took away, when the church is took away, the Spirit of God is pulled out. It's gone. They'll come in to church every night. Brother Chris, they'll come in like they always do. They'll come in, they'll get up, and they'll do their little praise. They'll do their little dance. They'll do whatever they have to do. But the power's gone. There's still be people that will come into the churches when the rapture is taking place. They, the Bible said that they'll even cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall upon them because of the perilous times that's coming upon them. Amen. Those evil days that's coming ahead of them. Amen. They'll want to die and he said death will flee from them. A man can walk up to them. Brother Chris, they can say, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. Death will flee. It's no longer, no longer. Jesus, he's got to conquer death. Read the Bible. Yeah, Jesus is going to come. That's one thing he's got to take. He's got to come back and take death. He's got to take death. And when he comes to taste the church, death is gone. There'll be no more dying. There'll be no more graveyards. There'll be nothing else. He has to come and take death. God showed him that this morning. He's got to come. He takes his bride. Death is no longer. Death is gone. Murders are gone. Babies won't be killed no more. It's probably not great. This morning, them babies' blood's crying out of the ground right now. Where they've been aborted. I heard that woman on there saying, Well, it ain't a woman's right if she gets out and gets raped and she gets the baby. Thank God put that baby in there. God created that baby. It might have been done the wrong way, but God still created that life. She can't create that life. They can't do it. They try. They're saying now that men can get pregnant. I want to see that. I want to see that. Because God said, I didn't make a mess. When I made men, I made men the way I wanted men to be made. They was made with a prostate. A woman ain't got a prostate. Right. A woman's got ovaries. A man ain't got ovaries. And a woman's got eggs. And a man ain't got eggs. Right. Come on. That's what we need to tell this world. Amen. God didn't make a mess when He made Adam and Eve. Amen. Right. He made them the way that He wanted them. Right. Amen. And that's why Jesus said, Amen. When I step out on the clouds of glory, I'm going to declare that time shall be no more. Amen. The trump of God's going to sail. Amen. The trumpet of God's going to sound. Amen. It's going to be so loud that the grounds are going to shake and the graves are going to burst open. And the Bible said that those that are dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then he said those that are alive and remain are going to be called up hereafter. We go up next. Y'all didn't get that. They're going to go up before we are. Then we get to go up next. The Bible said, amen, let the, like, the first be last and the last be first. Uh, we're going to get to go up last. Amen. We're going to get to be the ones, amen, that gets to make it. Because we went through the trials. Uh, we went through the tribulations. Uh, amen. We went through the fire. We went through the testes. And we're still alive. Y'all did not just got that. Y'all just get that. They're going to rise first. Those that still already went on. Amen. Greater clouds of witnesses. When I was looking at them clouds, you see them people walking. Just call me and say, oh, they, they doctored them. They didn't. They didn't doctor them. I took a picture of a cloud. I said, Lord, I said, how many are you? Everybody said they ain't but one. I said, how many are you, Lord? I said, I want to know. I want to know. 
Because I don't want to leave nobody wrong. I said, how many are you? I said, if you just show me, let me know. And I read today. He said, they heard a voice. The disciples were with him on the mountain. And they heard a voice come out of heaven saying, this is my beloved son. Who I am well pleased. And then Jesus left them. And they were afraid to go tell people that they heard that voice from heaven. Because Jesus was right there with them. And he ain't like that girl that won American Idol, Darcy Lynn or whatever her name is, he ain't no controllers. Huh? Come on. Common sense tells you Jesus don't know the hour or the day that he's coming back. Because if he did, then the Bible was the Bible's telling us wrong. Everybody said Jesus is the only one. But what's the Bible say? Said he don't know when he's coming back. Jesus don't know when he's coming back. He said even the angels in heaven don't even know. They ain't but one in heaven that knows it. That's my father. He wasn't talking about Joseph. He was talking about his heavenly father. The God that created us in his image. That's who he's talking about. And I said, okay, Lord, show me. And all of a sudden, I was in Lexington, Kentucky, or Elizabeth Town, Elizabeth Town, Kentucky, driving down, coming back from uh, Stephen Foster's restaurant. And I was coming back, where she had taken her to Louisville for uh, cancer treatments. And it was done got dark, Brother Michael. And I was asking the Lord that question. And all of a sudden, a big circle appeared in the sky. One big circle. Then right down below it was another circle, a little bit smaller than the big one. And right down below it was another circle. Just a circle. And they were right there in order. Like, you know how it moved. But it wasn't to move. And I said, okay, God, why are you showing me? He said, how many circles do you see? I said, three. How many is in the Godhead? He said, there's three in the Godhead. There's the Father, there's the Son, and there's the Holy Ghost. Well, they all work together. Yes, you're married. You and your wife become what? One. If you've got two children, how many children you got? You've got two. Well, what are you talking about, Brother Miller? When he steps out on those clouds, and Gabriel blows that trumpet. They're still hearing those people. Have you heard about the sounds that people was hearing? All across the land? Well, if you're a musician, you know what they're talking about. When you're playing an instrument, you've got to get it what? You've got to get it tuned up. It's got to be exactly the way, and that trumpet's got to be so set just right for when he makes that call. I love the shofar. I love to hear the shofar. I love it. I love to hear it blow. So I say, well, churches don't need to do that. That's pagan. How is that pagan? God said, sound the alarm. How are you going to sound the alarm? See, that shofar was used to sound the alarm. We don't know. They, they sound at the trunk. He said, well, when we march around the walls, Joshua, he said, don't you do nothing. Don't you say a word. You have them priests go before me. He said, but on that seventh day, when you begin the march, he said, I want you to tell everyone to sound as loud as they can sound. And I went down so far as it was blasting. And they was echoing through that valley. And all of a sudden, the walls of Jericho come falling down. Shofar. What is shofar? Amen. It's a tool. It's for the alarm to get sounded. They used it for a war call. Amen. They used it to sound a warning. They used the shofar to give a warning. Amen. I believe Gabriel, amen, is tuning that trumpet. Amen. I believe he's up there and he's up. Get it all the way that it's got to be. So when he stands and it's like, listen, it ain't like our trumpet. 
I believe it's got a big old long gold rod that goes down and at the end of it blows out. And I believe he has to go like a soap artist. Just and really blow. And the Bible said it's going to be so loud that the grounds are going to burst open. The graves are going to come open. Amen. And they're going to walk out of those graves. Amen. Ain't you glad that we're going to go and to be with him in the clouds of glory? Amen. There's coming a day. Amen, church. And it's coming soon. And we're going home. And we got to tell people, get ready. Get yourself ready. At the midnight cry, we're going home. The trump of God's going to sound. And he's going to step out on the clouds. And guess what's going to be with him? When he steps out. And then you know what the Bible said? I like this, sissy. You know what the Bible said? The Bible said as they stood gazing, he said, this same Jesus that you see go away, he's coming again on the same cloud. <laughs> In other words, he's coming back with great power. And he's coming back with great glory. <laughs> Amen. He's coming back. Amen. With the presence of God all around him. Because he's going to be on that cloud. Amen. When God comes in the place. Amen. The glory of God is all around. People said, I don't understand that, Brother Miller. I don't understand. I sometimes I don't understand. Bob said he didn't. With there's things that we don't understand. There's mysteries. It's a mystery being unfolded in front of us. The Bible is a mystery. <laughs> if we can learn all the mysteries, we'll never learn all the mysteries of the Bible. I don't care how much you read that. You know what else cloud represents? Oh, it means life, eternal life presence of God and eternal life. What did Jesus say? He said, I give you what? Eternal life. Yeah. God began to show me that I'm more sufficient. I said, Lord, I just need that. I just need something for the morning. In the morning. God, I just need something in the morning. Give me something, Lord. See, I don't, I don't get on the internet. I don't have them to email me a message. Sister Lori, but I get in there in the shower. I'm in there in my birthday suit and I'm talking to the Lord in my birthday suit. And I'm saying, Lord, what did Job say? Naked I came and naked shall I return. In other words, I came in this world naked and I'm going to leave this world naked. Amen. You might clothe me in those great clothes, but when I get to heaven, them great clothes are going to rot off of me. <laughs> and I'm going to stand before him again as I came. And I'm going to have a glorified body. Amen. This immortal is going to put on immortality. Amen. We're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. At the last trump of God. What are you talking about, Brother Miller? Hey, guess what? Who's running for election? Amen. These next three and a half years, I believe God's mission to show the United States of a America, who he is. I believe the anointing of God, amen, is going to flow from breast to breast. I believe God's going to pour his Holy Ghost out upon the churches. I believe those that don't even believe in it, amen, he's going to pour the Holy Ghost out upon them and they're going to know that that third party is real. They're going to know it. You know what else I believe? I've been watching these churches <laughs> And you remember how years ago the Baptist was hard shell Baptist. Yep, Move me if you can. If you can't get me off my seat, leave me alone. Yep, I had an uncle that was that way. I don't believe in none of that shouting. I don't believe in none of that speaking in tongues. But I believe you've got to be born again. Yep, we all got to be born again. Right, yeah. And all that shouting and stuff, that's, that went away back when the apostles. The Bible said that he quickens my own body. What's quickening that which shakes you? Amen. 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 Amen.
standing up, Sister Lord. Amen. I'm here to tell you. Amen. God said, tell him. Amen. And he is fixing to step out on the cloud of glory. His son is fixing. Amen. The Bible said that he's right there. I believe he's right there. He said, look up because your redemption draweth nigh. He's even nigh at the door. In other words, he's uh, making his way towards the door. And he don't even know what time it is that he's coming back. But he's making his way because he wants his bride to be ready. Uh, Amen. He knows he's got a bride to come after. He said, make yourself ready. Those without spot, wrinkle, or a blemish. He's coming back, church, on the same cloud that he went away on. This is what I tell him, Brother Chris. They took that cloud that he went away on and they stored it away. Just like you store your automobiles and just like you store your airplanes. He got that cloud back out where Sister Teresa and he said, that's my son's cloud. Don't you mess with it. I'm fixing to put him back on it and he's fixing to, oh my God, he's fixing to come back on that cloud. He's fixing to come back on me. Hallelujah. He said, I'm coming back. I'm coming back, church. I'm going to step out on that same cloud. Amen. I can see the angels. Brother Michael, they're all where they go with me. Yeah, we got to get it just right. Get prepared. I watch them airplane guys. And mechanics, they get on them big airplane. They got to make sure that them motors are just right. Make sure every screw and bolt, everything is prepared. Amen. He's got them angels. They're getting everything prepared. Amen. And he's waiting at the door. That's why he said, look up. Look up, church. Our redemption is drawing nigh. Amen. He's even nigh at the door. I get some. Oh, see the bright light shine. It's just about home time. I'm fixing to go somewhere. I'm fixing to go beyond the clouds. I'm fixing to go to be in the presence of the Almighty God. Well, glory, glory. And I want to take everybody I can. Like I said, I wouldn't hurt nobody's pills for nothing. For nothing. But I read where God said, if my people can't take correction, I don't want to get booked again. I've been booked by God. Brother Chris, I still come and try to preach. I don't want people to see what I've been going through. Because listen, the pastor ain't supposed to let the church see what he's going through. Amen. They're not supposed to let them see. Amen. That he's been going through a valley. Amen. He's still got to be spiritual. He's still got to stay prayed up even though he's going through a valley. I said, Lord, I can't feel you sometime. Where you at, Lord? I said, God, I'm sorry. I, I said, God, please forgive me. Lord, forgive me of what I've done back, way back in the past. He said, I don't forget you of that. Why do you keep telling me that? I said, because I don't want nothing to stop me from going through the clouds. I don't want nothing to stop me, Sister Claudine. Uh, people said, well, you're not supposed to look back where he brought you from. Oh, my. The curtain of me in now. Show me where you brought me from and where I am. All oh, this. I look back sometime just to see how far he brought me. Uh, and where I am at today, I wouldn't trade it for none of that back here. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for all that marijuana. I wouldn't trade it for that alcohol no more. Amen. I wouldn't trade it for a minute. Amen. Because I know, 
Man, I know that one day after a while, the eyes is never seen. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men. What God has prepared for them that love his appearance. Amen. I can't see what's up there. I know the Bible said, amen. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But he said, I didn't go to prepare you a mansion. He said, I went to prepare you a place that where I am, there you may be also. I know there's mansions in heaven. I know there's a street of gold. I know there's walls of jasper. And I know there's 12 gates to the city. Amen. Or pure pearl. Amen. I know there's rubies and sapphires. Amen. I know all that's in heaven. Sister Lori, I done it all around on the floor. And I said, I 
you're praying for somebody, they're casting that devil at them, and you lay that Bible on their head, he says, take that foot off of me. Get that foot off of me. I said, it ain't foot, it's the Bible. It's the B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. Amen. I stand on that book. He said, get it. You know why? Because Jesus said, put your heel on his head. And you bruise his head with your heel. He don't like that word of God. He don't like that foot on him. Amen. I tell people sometimes, amen, if you got something in your life that you don't want in your life, amen, and the devil's been bothering you with it, write it on the bottom of your foot, and every time you walk, you say, devil, take that. Devil, take that. Devil, take that. Amen. And he'll get tarred, and he'll finally say, I'm done with him. I can't get him. I can't win him. I'm done. Amen. The Bible said, amen, we have the power. He gave us the power and the authority, amen, over the devil. Amen. You see, the devil's telling people, you ain't going to hell. And the devil was my brother Chris.
meekness, kindness, gentleness. See, a lot of times people say, well, I don't, I can't forgive nobody. But if you go to God, you ain't going to hell. Right. What did you, what did he say? He said, forgive what? Sin. If God tells you to forgive somebody, you don't forgive. He said, well, sin.
said, Moses, take your shoes off. Because the place you're on is holy ground. Take them off, Moses. I'm in your presence. I'm here with you. I want you to go and set my people free. I want you to go and set the people. Go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Church, we got to make up in our mind that we can be a, a Moses and we can go tell the devil to let God's people go. Because listen, the devil is putting chains around God's people. Can I tell you something that really Sister Claudine that the devil's using right now is he's using that tradition chain that he's wrapping her around people. Tradition. Religion. That religion chain. Custom chains. He's wrapping them around them. Trumping them out with it. Because see, the name over the door ain't gonna get you to heaven. The religious people is what put him on the cross. Religion's not going to get you to heaven. Jesus said that you have to have a one-on-one relationship. You can't, you can't serve two masters. Either you serve one or you hate the other. But see, the devil wants to wrap those chains around God's people. They tell them, well, they don't want you at their church. They don't want you there. They don't like you. So you wrap that chain around you and they start squeezing you with it. Brother Michael, I've read some message chain breaker one night. And I had chains wrapped around people and have tradition of sex chain wrapped around you. Sex, the devil uses that right now more than anything. Is that sex chain that you wrap around people? You know why he does that? Because he knows he's bound. He's fixing to be loose for a thousand years. He's fixing to be loose. Oh, I'll get a chain. He's going to roam through the land. But then Jesus is going to come and put him back in chains. He's going to lock him back up. And guess what else? He's going to stand before God like we are. And he's going to cast him into the outer darkness. He's going to cast him into the lake of fire. See, right now he's in hell. The lake of fire is different than hell. See, the Bible said that, that those that are in the grave that in hell, they're going to come forth. And they're going to die again. In other words, they're coming up out of that grave. Them lost souls are going to come up out of that grave. He said death and hell is going to give up their dead. And they're going to be standing before God. Alive, Brother Chris. And he's going to look at them and say, Depart from me. I never knew you. And he said he's going to cast them into the lake of fire which is the second day. Oh my goodness. I don't know you like that. I want to hear you say, well done. Amen. Thank you, sir. I want to hear you say, well done, Sister Claudine. When my time comes, I want to hear you say, well done. Now, good and thank you, sir. I'm going to make you a I don't want to hear him say, I don't want to have to stand before him saying, Did I not cast that devil in thy day? Did I not do any miracles in thy day? Did I not do this in thy day? When you look at me and say, Depart from me. I never do. But when he steps out on that when that Son of God steps out on that flight, and I was thinking about how that disciple. And the angel said, Why stand here gazing? For they 
See, that's what I want to see. Amen. The Bible said we'll be known as we're known. But they'll neither be married or given in marriage there. You mean you and Sister Nora won't be married? No. But we'll know each other. You'll know your parents. You'll know your loved ones. Because he said we'll be known as we're known. But there won't be no marriage or given in marriage. Get a pause, so we get no pause. He went and got that mirror and stuck it 
under, no, no, nothing. He was fixing to announce her dead on the scene. God, pray, God, please. Don't take her, Lord. You're not done with her yet, God. You're not done. She said, I didn't even have time to even say, Oh, God. Didn't even have time to even say nothing. They got her in the ambulance. Oh, Mike, he was trying to get her to come to them ambulance drivers. They were trying to get her to the hospital. They got me on one of them back horses and them in it. They killed me. They wouldn't even let me go in the room where she was at. They wouldn't even let me go see her. I said, I got to go to my wife. I got to see my wife.
send me five hundred dollars and I'll give you this little bottle of water. Red light, turn right. Go to this red light, turn left. 
We didn't have GPSs back then. Amen. And I was out down there. Each and every one that's here tonight. 
I thank you, God, for our visitors tonight. Brother Chris. Morning, Mr. Red, amen. I thank God for her tonight. Lord, I thank you, God, for Sister Claudine coming tonight, Lord. I thank you for the congregation tonight. I thank you for the live stream tonight, Lord. I pray, God, in someone's heart and life. God will get prepared and get ready to make heaven their home tonight. God will God, you're going to step out. Your son is going to step out on the clouds of glory and declare it time. And we're going to go home. We're going to go home if we live right and we stay hold on. Those that endure to the end, Lord, you said, shall be saved. Help us to endure, Lord. Help us to be a light. Help us to be a witness to this lost and dying generation. God, I pray right now for the lost. I pray for those that's watching my live stream tonight that's backslidden. Morning. Saying, I don't know, preacher. All he said you had to do was repent. Do your first work over. Turn yourself around. Pick up your cross and follow him again. He didn't lead you, you left him. All you gotta do is say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, let me have my sorry tonight. Let him ask for forgiveness. God, I give you praise, I give you glory. I ask you to bless each and every one tonight. Bless them abundantly. Go to their homes and bless their homes. Bless their finances. Bless them spiritually, Lord. God, and I pray that you be with those that were involved in that wreck, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, we give you praise. We give you glory and honor for it. In Jesus' name. This altar's open tonight. Amen. If anybody wants to pray. <coughs> Amen. Brother Michael, they want you to stand in for Brother Johnny tonight. Brother Johnny is sick. Amen. He's been this way for, for a while. Amen. He hasn't told nobody. Amen. He hasn't told nobody that he's sick. Amen. He's just the type that would rather keep it to himself than to tell people he don't. You know, but listen, sometimes we have to talk to our brothers and sisters. Do you believe that God can touch Brother Johnny? Amen. Y'all come on up here. Amen. And let's pray. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Brother Wayne. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as Brother Michael sin is for Brother Johnny tonight. Oh, God, I ask God that you would go there to Brother Johnny's home tonight. Lord, touch him more from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. God, I rebuke those headaches. I command those headaches to leave that body. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you to touch that side. Take that pain out of that side. Whatever it is, God, that infirmity, I rebuke it right now. I command it to leave that body in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Let it be. We thank you for that for our brother. We thank you, Lord. You said you sent your word, and your word healed them. You said by his stripes. We are here. I claim it for our brother Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's been good. Church. Can I tell you what the devil told me a while ago? He said, Boy, you just messed up. 
mess up. I'd rather be mess up for the Lord to have him to whoop me. Yep. And to have him to get a hold of me. But you know what? God's
I don't believe he wants you to do without you having a place to live. I believe he drove you to pay your rent first and what you got to do for him and he'll bless it. What are you talking about, Brother Miller? Well, the Pharisees and the scribes, amen, they were bragging on how much money they were doing and how much they were putting in the offering. Just like that little woman. All she had was two little pennies, two little mites. All she had when she was like, I shouldn't have put them in there. And she gave all she had and she gave them. Them two little mites and Jesus blessed her instead of blessing those. He said, because she gave from the heart, they were given to be seen. When Jesus speaks to you to give, you give what he tells you to give. I don't believe he wants your electric to be shut off and you sit in the cold and freeze. Right. I believe that if you get your lights turned on, then God will say, all right, here I got somebody going to bless you. And they bless you and then you can give to God. Amen. That's the way I see it. I mean, a lot of people don't like it because I say that, but that's just the word of God. Mm -hmm. You have to go back to the church and say, can I have money? And I say, no, we ain't got it. Come on. That's the truth. Amen. I, I've had people from other churches just call in and call say, can you help us get our lights turned on? I said, what's wrong with God's church? They won't help us. This is what I do. I went and turn their lights on. I'll have a call say, Brother Miller, we need food. We're hungry. Can you feed us? No way that's floating. I said, your church won't buy no food. We've asked them, but we can't do it. We ain't got nothing. We're just a small church. But we still try to help. You know what we've done? We went and bought groceries. We took it to them. You know what God done? Just a few days later, God sent a check in the mail. Took care of what we spent out. He sent it right back. Go. We didn't ask for it. We don't ask for no money from nobody on live street. But God just blesses us. It comes from different places. And I thank God. I thank God every day. And he takes care of us because we take care of the people. Amen. Now I just don't give it out to unless God lays it on my heart to do it. I have to thank God because the Bible said to be good stewardess over your money. You don't waste it. You just don't hand it to a drug addict to go buy drugs. Right. Amen. You don't give them money. I don't give money to nobody. Amen. I, I took them to the, take them to the store, buy them groceries, or Brother Wayne and Sister Connie, and take care of it. Amen. And we had a couple that came here one time, brought their little baby, he brought his little baby in here, and that baby was so wet. And the women of the church left the church and went to the dollar store up here and bought diapers and pull-ups and, and brought some baby wipes and bought some clothes and and bought some, I think, formula too, and honey, some bottle, bottles, even to help that baby. And that man said in the church, come up here to be prayed for, we was praying for him, it's like the Lord showed me. I said after church, I told him, I said, my sister, pastor, my sister, pastor's wife, they're going to meet you at Walmart, and I, I told them to go in and get y'all some groceries. They drive out to Walmart. You know what he done to my assistant pastor? He come up and said, I don't need no groceries. I want the money. He cussed my assistant pastor down. Because he wouldn't give him the money. He wanted drugs. He used that baby. He thought I'd bring that baby in there. I'll break their hearts. But God <coughs> never showed what was going to take place. And my assistant pastor, and then they said, oh, you ain't getting no money. We don't do that. A few weeks later, I saw him at Circle K. He was a star out of his mind. He was wasted. But he knew who I was. They was getting out. They was doing all these game signs. And he looked over and he saw me. And he said, oh. Stop. But God said, Brother Michael, if we freely give, freely shall we receive. 
Amen. The Bible tells us in there. Amen. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Amen. All these curses and stuff, Jesus done away with them when he died on the cross. Amen. He did. He died on the cross. He done away with the curses. It's been good. Amen. Who wants to give God some praise tonight? Who wants to give God a testimony tonight? He said, you're made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. Amen. Who wants to give God praise? Now don't everybody do it all at once. You'll have a crash. Amen. Be a crash and he's a life community church. Amen. Somebody wants to give God some praise. I'm gonna make I've been thankful for being here today, <coughs> here today, hearing the word and being there for me when I didn't deserve it, even very I just praise you for everything you've done for me. Amen. Somebody now, the Lord, the Church is our prayers. May God bless you. Be safe this week.